Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I've got two portions to this video. One, we're going to color it clean and simple lilies, and the other one is going to show you how to make glassy looking text. I'm going to start off with the Darling Lily stamp set and a few marker colors and some Desert Storm cardstock to color the simple card. And the Desert Storm is made of the same stuff, I think, as Nina, the solar white cardstock that I always use for my Copic coloring. And I love that because the markers act the same in terms of how they blend. They don't act the same in terms of their color because the color on them is going to be darker than the color that that you would color on a white piece of paper. So you have to adapt your colors a little bit. You can always print your Copic hex chart onto a piece of this. If you're doing pencil work on this, you can print your Prismacolor or your uh, Luminance or your Polychromos hex chart on this paper and see what the colors look like and test them out first in that way. So I'm just going to color a few colors on here and I've got some very soft gray ink that I used for stamping the image so I could make this really a no line looking card. And no line on this cardstock looks particularly beautiful because you really can barely see the lines. It was challenging even to see them as I was trying to color because I was losing it just a little bit. So the leaves are all a couple of different greens and I'm going to add more greens and more yellows to them. But I wanted to jump in and work on the flower a little bit too. And I'm using a B01, which on a white card would be a little bit intense. So you might use a lighter color if you were going to try this on a white piece of paper. But on this darker paper, the B01 works. And don't be afraid when the color first goes down, it's going to be darker because the paper is wet. As it dries, you'll just see it start to slowly lighten. That's one of the reasons why it's great to put your color chart onto the paper that you're going to color on so that you can see what it's going to be in the long run as opposed to what it looks like right when the marker comes out of the, uh, the pen because it's going to look much darker. So this B01 you can see is really lightening and I've just barely got some color on there. And while that settles in, because I want to know how far that's going to go before I do further work on it, I decided to drop a little yellow into the leaves and brighten them up a little. And then grab some E99 because I was worried with my next step I was going to lose those little tips on all the little bits that are in the center of the lily. And then I went to my colored pencils because color pencil shows up really nicely on this paper. And I can use some good heavy pressure to make flicking lines. So it's the same principle as flicking with a Copic marker. You press really hard at the beginning of the stroke and then lighten up and that gives you that soft edge and makes it look blended. And I'm basically putting that soft edge to blend where that blue starts. So all the areas that I left white or, or left the, the paper the color or the color of the paper. Goodness gracious I can't talk today. The areas where I, I stop the blue, I want the white to go over top of that so it looks like the white is blending into the blue. And giving myself just a little sharp edge right around each of the highlight points on this flower. Note where the flower curls under. There's shadows that go underneath. But on the very top of it, I'm just putting a little line of the white to carry that highlight around the edge. And I'll go back in and darken some of those curls in a little bit. But for now, I'm just trying to get the general shape of this flower to start working really well and make sure I've got all my highlights facing that kind of right to upper right kind of direction. I've still got more work in that center of it, but <laughs> now I at least feel better that my lines aren't disappearing so much that I'm not going to be able to see them. My eyesight is not what it once was, and when I do these no-line ones, I end up really kind of having to look very closely to make sure that I'm I'm not missing parts of it. And even when I recolored this on a piece of white paper later after shooting this video, I found that I, I had misinterpreted. There's a, a leaf right under the base of that flower that I thought was maybe the base of the flower itself. And, you know, there's different areas that you can see more when the stamp is clearer and black. 
So I wanted to put some solid color underneath of, of that place where the flower goes in. So I, I threw in my B4-5 and you could see it bled. So I switched to a B5-2 and softened it. But I knew it was going to be okay because I was putting white lines for each of those parts of the flower going into that center section anyway. So didn't worry about it. And then I wanted just a little pop of contrast. So I took my YG-9-7 and added a few shadows and not like outlining the whole image, just putting some shadows in the darkest areas and letting them just be. You can go in and add more shading to each one of them if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just let them be, just let them sit there. And the B52 adding extra accents right here at this last stage allows me to control a few edges and make sure that I've got just the right amount of detail that I want on the flower itself. Now this set doesn't have an Easter sentiment in it, which I found kind of surprising. They come out with a lily at Easter time and they have other sentiments on it. So I made a thank you card out of it. But being Easter season or working toward Easter season, I also wanted to use this on a Bible journaling page because I am a Bible journaler and this one I did in my interleaved Bible. And I did it by creating a cross out of two strips of washi tape. And then I stamped the ones in the back while the washi tape was down. I masked out, I took it off, then I masked out that section so I could have that one flower cascade over the front. And I wish I had masked out that little stem at the bottom, but I didn't. But when I started working on this, this alive word, I wanted to show you how to do that. Because even if you're not a Bible journaler, I thought you might be interested in seeing how that works. But this is one of the two books that I have. If you're interested in a good gift to put in somebody's Easter basket or just a gift for Easter, these are great books to get them more engaged in reading scripture and doing art along with it. This book is the workbook and it's printed on Bible paper. So you can practice different techniques and different mediums and things. And that's what I'll be working in to show you how I made the alive word. And the, the butterflies on the left were something that I shot a video of. So if you're interested in seeing more Bible journaling, you can always go subscribe to that channel because I have a separate one where I put out a video every Sunday. Now for the word alive, I wanted to do the purple on the top and the more pinky color down below. So I made kind of an arc across the word and you can always print out a word from your computer and then trace it into your Bible. If, if that is more helpful, I just sketched the word in the, I, I made sort of this swoosh line across it. So the top part above the swoosh, is in the bluish purple color and then the pinkish purple is down below. I started going around it because the idea is to create some depth around the letters and you'll see when I put the white in where the white goes because I'm adding more color for the white to contrast with. So the white is going to be right around where that little swoosh is and what I did was blend that with my finger. So if you put down the white pen and then just flick it with your finger a little bit, it softens that edge and gives you a little bit of gradation. You could also do that with a white pencil a little bit, but if you're trying to get the white pen, which is a little heavier pigment, to start making that blend, you can just do that by, by swooshing it while the ink is wet. Uh, you may have done that by accident, like I have many times. And after that was done, and I had just a few white accents here and there, I added a little bit more of the color to increase the contrast between some of those different areas so that you could definitely see that there's white and color and white and color. I went in with a darker purple pencil as well. I don't think I really had room to do that. I, you could barely see it in the Bible journaling page, but you can see it much more here where adding that little contrast creates that glassy look for a piece of text. So there you go, my little crazy weird typography lesson. And there is again, the Bible journaling page. So that is all I have for you today. Again, if you want a signed copy of either of my books, they're at Ellen Hudson. It's the only place online you can get them signed or you can just get the books on Amazon if you need them super fast. If you're watching this just before Easter and you're in a rush, because they will overnight stuff to you. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys again in another video. Bye-bye.